What's up everybody? Bill with Hop Farm, Honest Open Permaculture. And today we're going to be talking about something I really haven't shown y'all much of yet. It's a little food forest I planted about a year and a half ago. This one behind me. So stay tuned. It was a cold one this morning. It was like 24 degrees I believe this morning. And everything was frosted. Lines were frosted, waters were frozen. So it was a good fun morning and the daily chores took a little bit longer than usual. But I kind of prepared for it. I had waters made up last or yesterday before the sun went down because I knew the, my hose would be frozen and all that so I could get it and go. But we are standing in the little food forest I planted about a year and a half ago and Today we're going to be doing some chopping and dropping, taking out all this green that you see on the floor, on the ground, all that's comfrey. We're going to be chopping and dropping that, pulling some of it out that's in some spots I don't want it, and we're going to be doing some chopping and dropping on this big mamma jamma right here. It is a autumn olive. It's a nitrogen fixer. It also produces a little sour berry. So I'll walk you through this real quick and kind of show you what I have in here and what I put in here. Right now we're, we're standing at the more southern, southwest edge of it. And on the southwest edge I have some fig trees in here. There's a fig tree and there's another fig tree down there. We also have strawberries as a ground cover. We have mint. Let's see. The mint has just exploded still, even though it's been really cold. It's mm, it's, it's a spearmint, and we also have a chocolate mint in here. I believe this is the chocolate mint over here. Mm-hmm. Little strawberries are, even though it got really cold last night, they're still doing well. In this little food forest, I have cougar culture beds. So I'm standing in between two right now. There's one over here, and then we'll turn this camera around. And then there's one down here that I was just in where the mint is, and that strawberry. I've got three cougar culture beds going throughout this little food forest. Uh, if you don't know what a cougar culture bed is, it is a garden bed that is pretty much filled with woody debris, mulch, you dig a trench or you just pile it up and then you cover that with soil and what that does is it acts as a uh, slow release fertilizer as it's broke, breaking down all the stuff inside the soil or all the stuff that you covered up breaks down slowly and feeds the plant and see this first home culture bed right here is all full with native grasses and weeds I'm gonna be pulling that stuff out oh, my gloves smell like mint now fantastic now we're kind of on the northern edge the northern northeastern part and this is where I have my taller stuff I have a apple another apple tree here this is another nitrogen fixer it's a uh, Japanese silk tree a mimosa tree also comfrey running all through it on the top of these whole culture beds as you can see here let me turn this around for you we have asparagus growing also. This is a big asparagus fern that needs to get chopped down. We've got rhubarb at the ends. Strawberries also, more along the edge. Look, here's a strawberry in here. A strawberry growing right beside the rhubarb. Growing right beside the, the asparagus. Right behind us is an apple tree. There's another apple tree. We'll come in here a little bit. In the middle here, we've got a peach tree. This one is the one that gave me a peach this year. Actually gave me two peaches. First ones out of this little food forest. Uh, we do have goji berries planted in here also. It's one reason I want to open up this big guy right here that just exploded this year, this big autumn olive, to give the goji berries that are back in here some room. 
clear out some of this uh, greenery laying around. Let's keep walking through. Here's another strawberry, some more mint. We also have blueberries planted on the southern edge here. Let's see if we got one up here. No, I don't remember. It's been a while since I've been over here. I just let this go for a little while and uh, see what it does. Yep, here's a blueberry in here that needs to get cleaned up. Oops. Blueberry in there. There's a blueberry there. We got another blueberry here. There's another one down there. So at this edge, here's some more comfrey. All this comfrey is gonna get chopped and dropped. Some more um, asparagus ferns that are dead and flopped over and needs to get chopped down. So that's what we're gonna be doing today is chopping a lot of this stuff. These autumn olives need to get smaller. Behind that autumn olive there is a pear tree. We've got another pear tree here. A peach tree back in there. Another Hugo culture mound. And we've got some native blackberries that are starting to sprout up here. big old pear tree it needs to get opened up I think I'm gonna chop that that leader I don't want it to get too tall this is gonna be a small food forest I don't want it to get humongous I don't want a big huge tree so like this pear tree also it's gonna need to get topped there's cardoons in here um, there is what else did I miss it's perennials I think I got it all. We got the pears, we got the peaches, the apples, strawberries, blueberries, uh, asparagus, figs. The autumn olive is a nitrogen and uh, nitrogen fixer and also produces a berry. Uh, the mimosa tree is a, a nitrogen fixer we have in here, and for the taller canopy, uh, the mint. Hmm. The blackberries. goji berries also right behind this food forest as you can see we got some garden beds back here that haven't been messed with in a while that fence line there's a little fence line there that I'm going to be growing um, different types of blackberries raspberries different types of berries that will climb up this fence Some okra that didn't get harvested. Got a bunch of seeds though for next year. Back here I got a little spot with uh, an apple tree, two pawpaw trees. They're small right now. And a nitrogen fixer to help them along the way. Another autumn olive. A little apple. Two pawpaws over there. All right, so let's get to chopping and dropping. And after we get this all chopped and dropped, we're gonna put a layer of mulch on here. A layer of wood chips. Got a little bit done so far. You see behind me, kind of pan around. Cut down that big um, autumn olive that was all growing big. Cut that one down, trim this autumn olive down. And there's two up here we trimmed down real well. Um, and now you can you can kind of see the the hugel culture beds. Let me walk towards the end. You can see them a lot better now. I took comfrey that was all up in the in between the the uh, trees over here and threw them on the hugel culture beds. And I'm going to be doing the same thing over here, taking the comfrey, throwing it on the hugel culture bed. In front of these hugel culture beds, I also did also did dig small swales. Um, a swale is just something to catch the water and kind of redirect it. 
you can kind of see it running on the south side on this side of the swale I mean of the hoover culture bed the water runs downhill this way so it'll catch in these little swales and then it'll run out to the edge and then it'll run down the rest of the hill so hopefully it helps because we have a really wet area back here I tried to choose one of the higher areas that's back here to plant these trees in and then also build a little water works to where the water could come into this area and then flow down this way and then flow back out so the progression is coming along also I did forget I didn't show you one other tree that I don't know if it's gonna make it or not oh it's back over here in the middle it's a uh, cherry tree haven't cleaned it up yet I had one other cherry tree over there that didn't make it all right let's get back to it so when you're doing this you obviously don't want just anybody in a food forest chopping and dropping for you uh, it's <laughs> you kind of know kind of want to know what you're cutting where you're cutting it where you're putting it because um, you don't want someone coming in and pulling up your asparagus and pulling up your strawberries and well, I'm just chopping and dropping so you need to know the difference between the native plants or the native weeds and the, and the plants that you put in best way to do that is to plant it yourself learn about it when you come in and chop a drop you're not pulling up all the food that you planted <laughs> day two didn't get everything finished yesterday so it is the next day much warmer today than it was yesterday so it's looking pretty good so far it's gonna look a little bit different on the next clip got the chop and drop done got a little warm out here I'm actually sweating a little bit I had to take my jacket off so the purpose of a chop and drop um, in a food forest system like this is to speed up the process of like a regular forest um, like this big forest that's behind me all back back here they do their own chop and drop every year during fall when the leaves come down and uh, they cover the ground and they decompose they feed the worms and the microbes which in turn feeds the trees but I'm speeding up the process here with certain types of plants like comfrey uh, nitrogen fixers and doing more chop and drop than just one time a year during the fall so all throughout the summer all that comfrey that I just put let me turn this around here bit. all the comfrey that I just put on all these hoover culture beds I have been chopping and dropping during the summer and putting around the fruit trees to give them extra fertilization for those comfrey plants to break down and feed them and comfrey is one of the best one of the best plants to use for that reason um, it's a dynamic accumulator its taproot goes really 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 deep in the ground pulls up trace minerals that the other plants can't get to and deposits them in the leaves so when you break those leaves off and you throw them around the fruit tree it's going to get the benefit from those trace minerals that that fruit tree couldn't get down and reach to so it's good to put around your fruit trees it's good to put around your garden um, it's not gonna be in competition with your fruit tree because like I said it's, its root zone is different than the fruit so you can see I got all the comfrey around from around the trees put them on the on the hoover culture beds the chop and drops from the autumn olive they look like little sticks now but they're gonna explode next year they're very hardy trees you can cut them down to a stump and they're gonna come up again so the next step is gonna be getting mulch the wood chips that we got up there for free and we're gonna be putting them around the different fruit trees that we have in here maybe some on top of the hoover culture beds we'll see how much we get done let's go get some wood chips. all right so we made it to the wood chip pile time to take these wood chips here put them in our little trailer and go drop them off Alright, let's 
drop these off. wood chips. I also brought a bucket down with me because I can't drive my mower and this trailer into the food forest area. It's just too tight for me to get in there. So I brought a bucket to be able to fill the bucket and then go dump the bucket around the bucket of wood chips around the trees where I want it. Got our bucket filled. Let's go take it around this pear tree over here. Give it to the pear tree. One of the reasons for this mulch, these wood chips, is gonna help keep the soil warmer during the summer. It's gonna help insulate the soil. I have a problem with too much rain sometimes out here, so I have to be careful about using the wood chips, but if you were in a dry area, wood chips would be great for putting on the ground and keeping, from, keeping moisture from evaporating out of the ground so you don't have to drip irrigate your trees. So as you can see, I've got a little bit around this tree, a little bit around the trees, up there around the fig tree. And what we're doing, simply dumping it out. And then we'll spread it out a little bit from the tree. We want the tree to be able to breathe a little bit. For since in a, in a wet climate here, it can get moldy and start to rot. That's it. Gonna do that around this peach tree. And then we got apple trees back there, another peach, another pear, a cherry. So yeah, we'll do this around all the trees. And if we have enough wood chips left, we'll put some in, in between the trees, like on a path area, a walkway. This little food forest area isn't very big guys it's only like a 30 foot by 40 foot area I wanted to build a small one an intensive one like close together because um, I moved out here from the city and in the city you don't have a whole lot of room I don't have 11 acres most people don't have 11 acres in the city to be able to grow so I wanted to show people that you could do it in a 30 by 40 foot area 11 That's trees small. Then we have strawberries and blueberries and um, blackberries and asparagus and mint and shoot, what else? Cardoons, goji berries. This is all within a 30 by 40 foot area. Some of you are saying, oh, I don't even have a 30 by 40 foot area in the city. I live in an apartment. Well, there's also other things you can think about or try. Through all, all throughout the city, there's there's uh, parkways, you know, the spots in between the streets. There's into cul-de-sacs. They have areas that can be used in neighborhoods. There's all sorts of areas that could be used up against the street that could be growing food. If you're interested in something like that, look up Ron Finley. He's on YouTube. He's all over the internet. Um, he's in California. And he does just that. He goes in, he, he lives in urban areas and he started a food forest on his parkway outside his house in the public area and started growing fruit out there, started growing trees and stuff. So look at Ron, Ron Finley if you're interested in something like that and getting started in the city. He's a good guy to follow um, and he'll give you some good pointers on that. So that's it guys, that's what we got going on. We're gonna continue mulching these trees and I'll probably get you a picture there at the end. If you guys enjoyed this video please hit the like button subscribe and make sure you hit the little bell notification so you know every time we put a video out thanks y'all